Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 189 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of three complications occurring during one case in one patient. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous coronary bypass. He had a patent lima to LAD, patent saphenous vein graft to M, but he had an occluded vein graft that was sequential to the PDA and the posterior lateral with a CTO of the mid-right coronary artery within a previously placed stent. This is the image of the SVG to the obtuse marginal that was patent. Patients like this may benefit for doing triple injection, in which one injects the bypass graft or more than one bypass graft. In this particular case, we had undergrade injection of the right coronary artery engaged through femoral axis, then we had by radial axis one of the catheters, the left, was a lima catheter, and the other catheter was actually a EBU guide filling the left main. And this is an example of the triple injection that actually was very important for clarifying the anatomy. So what we have is again RCA CTO, then a long segment of occlusion that goes all the way to the posterior lateral and to the PDA. And actually what we are seeing here, the connecting segment, between the PDA and the posterior lateral is a portion of a skip graft. That was the part of the sequential vein graft. But now the way it works is it does supply the PDA through the right posterior lateral branch. So how to approach this patient? This is clearly a highly complex CTO. The occlusion goes from the mid RCA to the mid PDA and to the mid AV groove branch, so very long occlusion clear but blunt proximal cap. And then there may be some septal collaterals, but those come mainly from the LAD that fills through the lima. So not the best for retrograde abscess. So in this case, the plan was to try undergrade wiring and then use undergrade dissection and reentry. The plan was to go to the posterior lateral and do the PDA and then do a bifurcation stenting. As we'll see later, the plan changed during the case. We did have a very difficult to penetrate proximal cap. So this is a wire impenetrable proximal cap. Different guide wires, including a Hornet 14, could not penetrate. In cases like this, sometimes doing the Carlino technique, injection of a small amount of contrast, half to one cc, through a deeply wedged microcatheter, can help uh, both clarify the pathway, but also maybe soften the tissue and allow subsequent wire advancement. In this case, after we did the Carlino, we were actually able to advance a filter XT wire that knuckled and seemed to advance along the course of the RCA. When we look at different projections, actually we had entered outside the stand, but at this point, given the wire impenetrable club, uh, cap, we were okay with that. So the wire was advanced. Actually, it uh, went along the course of the PDA, but we decided to go through the right posterior lateral that was filling the PDA, and uh, that will actually demonstrate in a little while that actually opening that could restore flow both into the posterior lateral and then through the bypass graft to the PDA. So by opening this CTO, one could restore undergrade flow to both vessels. So this is a Gladius Mongo guide wire that was knuckled and advanced uh, laterally. An important factor is that for technical reasons, actually, we were given a 100 centimeter femoral guide, AL1, for the right, which became a problem. And the problem is that this uh, reentry zone now that we are trying to get in is way down. It's very far from the tip of the guide catheter, and we had difficulty reaching it there. We almost ran out of length on the catheters. However, the actual problem was crossing. We were unable to advance uh, equipment through. Uh, this um, a very diseased and heavily calcified right coronary artery. Eventually, after multiple attempts, we tried to use the stingray balloon. Actually, we used two stingray balloons that got damaged in the process, but eventually we were able to get a recross dual lumen microcatheter that can also be used for reentry. But then we had a surprise. We thought the knuckle would have gone into the posterior lateral, but now we're seeing that the knuckle actually has gone out likely into a small side branch, and this will become important as we move on through the case. So we moved it back, and then we redirected the Gladius Mongo that went into the posterior lateral, and then uh, uh, we tried uh, re-entry, but then we lost everything. So we had to remove the guide, and 
That was actually a good opportunity for us to change for a 90 centimeter AL1 guide catheter that helped us reach that portion of the coronary artery. So there it is, the rewiring. Fortunately, advancing a knuckle guide wire was fairly quick. Uh, I think we had done some ballooning before in an attempt to get a stingray balloon. So the wire actually um, very quickly moved along the course of the vessel. Uh, we had a lot of difficulty once again delivering a stingray balloon. We tried several times with the existing stingray balloons, but could not get them there. You can see the wire is actually dancing nicely with the right posterior lateral. And then eventually we were able to deliver a new one. So this is the third stingray balloon that was delivered to the re-entry zone into the right posterior lateral. We did the double blind stick and swap, so we stick proximal to the proximal marker, and then we performed uh, exit between the two markers. And then we did um, advance um, a pilot 200 that seemed to course along the course of the vessel, although it had some difficulty going through the distal uh, segment of the anastomosis of the skip craft. We advanced a microcatheter, and then we used a workhorse wire that nicely advanced into the skip segment of the saphenous vein graft. We predilated the entire RCA with a 2.0 millimeter balloon, and then this is what we saw, which of course was not unexpected because we did have exit of a microcatheter and a wire into the segment, likely that polymer wire went into a small branch. So what to do next? This is a large vessel perforation. The first step is to inflate a balloon, and then for large vessel perforations, deliver a covered stand. Also, this is a bypass patient, so there is, of course, the concern for loculated diffusions developing and causing compression of the cardiac chambers. We did have, fortunately, it's an 8 French L1. This is an 8 French trap liner. We advanced the second wire. We did advance a balloon to achieve hemostasis. We did an emergency echo that showed only a small effusion. But then we did have a lot of difficulty. We tried to advance a 2.5 by 15 millimeter PK papyrus that actually could not be reached. And then when the papyrus came out, it was only the balloon without the stand. But fortunately, eventually we found the lost stand. It was dislodged actually at the TUI. And there it is, the PK papyrus that became dislodged from the balloon. So how do we now deliver? And delivering equipment is important in any case, but it is especially important here because we do have a significant complication in a bypass patient who is not a good candidate for emergency to coronary bypass. So it is of paramount importance to deliver the cover stand to the area of the perforation. We tried many different things. We tried uh, to balloon the entire RCA several times, and then uh, uh, we tried uh, to deliver other um, new PK papyrus that did not work. We eventually decided uh, to change our strategy. So we advanced a second guide catheter. We threw the first one and then engaged the right coronary artery with the second guide catheter. So now we typically have the so-called ping pong guide catheters. One guide catheter, what it does is it has the blocking balloon to minimize bleeding, and the other one is going to be used to deliver the cover stent. Unfortunately, the trap liner could not be delivered distally. We predilated a lot and then tried to deliver two new PK papyrus stents, but both did not go. Actually, one had a shaft that became deformed and subsequently fractured. What to do next? The six friends guide extension, a six friend telescope, actually could not fit. It was not big enough to get a PK papyrus through. So, we decided that our only hope was to be able to get a seven French guide extension all the way to the area of the perforation, and that was extremely difficult. It took um, almost half an hour. A lot of inch warming, a lot of ballooning, a lot of the dual hand technique, independent hand technique, but eventually we were able to deliver the guide extension all the way and then um, deploy a covered stand, which fortunately successfully sealed the distal perforation. That was obviously a big relief, considering the adverse consequences if we were not able to do so. The question then became, should we stand the distal touchdown of the vein graft? We decided against it, which, as we will see, was not the right decision. We placed three drag stands uh, almost all the way to the proximal right coronary artery. 
and then did another injection, and now we have another problem. Initially, we thought that this was maybe another bypass, but it did not make sense because we see the skip segment of the bypass graft here. And then we did the right, uh, an RAO injection of the right, and now we can clearly see that we have another perforation. This is a perforation in the distal right coronary artery. So we placed another PK papyrus cover stand, 3.5 by 20, and that seemed to um, help with achieving hemostasis, or there was still some staining around the vessel. At this point, the patient became hypotensive, dropped his blood pressure significantly, and developed ST segment depression. We were, of course, concerned for tamponade, so we did an echo emergently, but the echo was actually okay. There was no change in the size of the pericardial effusion, which was very small. And then this is an image, and now we see that we actually have very poor flow going distally, and uh, the reason for this, we found out, is that we had likely dissection or destabilization of the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft skip segment. And this is now verified. We would advance the microcatheter, did a more selective injection to the microcatheter, and we can see that there's a dissection or a worsening of the lesion acutely into this um, touchdown of the skip graft. This can be sometimes very difficult to cross. We tried a very soft SU03 guide wires, and after multiple attempts, we were actually able to advance it through that distal anastomosis in the seventh ring graft. But delivery was extremely challenging. We eventually delivered a six French telescope almost all the way to the posterior lateral, performed balloon angioplasty of the lesion, and then we were fortunately able to deliver a 2.5 by 15 millimeter drag eluting stand across the touchdown that was deployed, and uh, that uh, restored QT3 flow that resulted in resolution of the hypotension as well as the ST segment changes. However, we now see that there's still some staining in that uh, distal right coronary artery. We did again the area of view, and we see that although it's improved, there's still some oozing, some uh, uh, extravasation outside the artery. So we decided to play another cover stand, so we placed another PK papyrus stand, and this was the final result with a timothy flow into the vessel. And actually, the patient did have several days in the hospital, but he did well. He never had a pericardial effusion, and overall, he then had a good recovery. This is a case that uh, has uh, several lessons. The first one is uh, that uh, previous bypass patients can be very tough to recanalize. In such patients, often triple injection can help clarify the anatomy and determine the best crossing plan. In this case, our plan was actually creative. We eventually recanalized the CTO all the way to the posterior lateral and then took advantage of the pre-existing skip graft from the posterior lateral to the PDA to fill the PDA. We inadvertently used 100 centimeter guys initially, which was a problem because we almost did not reach the distal vessel, and then we changed to a 90. Although we all like to say that uh, trust the knuckle, and the knuckle is a safer way to cross a lesion, it is not 100%. If the knuckle enters into a small side branch, as was likely what happened in this case, then a significant perforation can occur, especially if a microcatheter comes through. We had a lot of difficulty delivering the stingray, despite predilatation. Uh, in cases like this, if the stingray gets damaged, sometimes it's best to use a new stingray to be able to deliver it to the a re-entry zone, which was successful using the third device. Probably the most stressful part of this case was delivering the cover stand to the distal perforation. This took a long time and taught us the importance of uh, a guy catheter extension. Seven French extension was needed, and that was very hard to deliver through this calcific segment. However, after multiple attempts, it was delivered, and through this, the PK papyrus was also delivered to the vessel. We did have a loss of the PK papyrus stand. Fortunately, it was lost uh, on the wire and was successfully retrieved outside the body. And then to top it off, the third complication to perforation stand loss was acute vessel closure. We had likely dissection at the touchdown of the skip saphenous vein graft. That was also difficult to treat, but the key there was using a very soft wire, a SUO3, to cross it to minimize worse in the dissection, and then using a guide extension almost all the way to the posterior lateral to deliver a stand across the distal anastomosis. Thank you.